Aloha and welcome to Good Morning Sri Lanka on yet another glorious morning. It's me, Barnaby Kripasinghe, doing the hosting job as usual. This is a way to start off a great day. Eat well, be healthy and watch Good Morning Sri Lanka. <laughs> Good morning, Amaya. Good morning, Barnaby. You're a bit chipper today in the morning. Very much indeed. <laughs> All right, so speaking about eating healthy and being healthy, on today's show we're going to speak about a disease that's quite prevalent in our society nowadays actually with the changing lifestyles and busy schedules. It's always something where eating patterns are affected all the time yeah. and people skip breakfast, they eat a lot of dinner, things like this always happen. So one consequence of this change in your lifestyle could be the disease gastritis. And that's what we are going to focus today's show on. So later on, we'll also be speaking about a little segment on entertainment as well. But right now, to speak to us about gastritis, we have with us a specialist in gastroenterology, and he is Professor Arjuna De Silva. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Good the morning. show. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> and how do you usually start off your morning? Yeah, well, quite sleepily, I think. <laughs> 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 like most of us. Yes. Like most of us. So you need the coffee and the tea yes, to get up in yeah. the morning. And but unfortunately, those things are no, no, if you have reflux. We'll talk about that, yes. Of course. All right. To start off with, Doctor, what is gastritis? As simple as it were. Yeah. Well, gastritis is sort of a combination of, uh, when, when you say gastritis, uh, patients will call it many names. But it uh, and we say basically two diseases. One is uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, mm -hmm. uh, scientific, and the other is uh, like gastropathy, or uh, which involves the stomach and may involve gastric ulcers, erosions, duodenal ulcers, or which is co known as peptic ulcer disease. So th these are all the lining. Yeah. Of so the, the, so what's the difference? Yeah, the reflux disease is uh, when the acid in the stomach comes into the gullet. Okay. So you get symptoms, mm -hmm. like uh, the main symptom is like heartburn, or just a burning sensation. You can get belching, f like feeling full, all that. Then uh, gastritis can give you similar symptoms as well, but it can uh, give you a sort of pain lower down. And if there is an ulcer, sometimes you get bleeding, black stools, things like that as well, or severe pain really. But the other thing they have found is there is no direct relationship between the, the pain and sometimes the, what you find if you do an endoscopy. So it's, it's a huge uh, gamut of symptoms. Mm -hmm which uh, different patients will describe in different ways. Some will say they have gastritis, gas, various things. But it's basically two separate things, which may not be easy to separate sort of clinically. Of course. And I think we have some visuals as well. But let's go, yes. before we go into the causes and the symptoms and the cure, let's go into exactly what is acid reflux. So if you could just elaborate. Perhaps. Yes, I think we've got a visual of the mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens is when you have uh, normally, the, as you said, the stomach has got acid. So that's not supposed to come into the gullet or the esophagus. So, uh, I mean, there may be a little physiological, which is normal, small amounts, but that doesn't cause any symptoms. What happens if if it's, if you have reflux disease? Uh, that's oh, we can see it on yes. screen as well. Uh, the acid goes in, it goes up and sort of it. Uh, causes symptoms like burning, heart pain. Difficulty in breathing, is it, it? It can happen as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. But the main reason for the reflux is there is a sphincter or muscle which prevents the acid from going up normally. It's okay. So it's uh, the tightness of the sphincter. That's the main mechanism. So y because uh, w things that make the sphincter lax or may makes it relax causes reflux or makes it worse. For instance, if you are pregnant, mm -hmm. right, then the tummy is like uh, distended and there is more pressure on the diaphragm mm -hmm. and then this muscle is relaxed and then you can get more reflux. That's a common thing uh, and your pregnancy is physiological, it's not a disease. But mm -hmm. uh, then if you take, that's why you are talking about the coffee and the tea, excessive uh, alcohol, uh, those things relax the sphincter. 
and mm. then excessively spicy food as well. So then uh, again the reflux is made worse. If you take fatty foods as well, yeah, so basically anything tasty uh, <laughs> <laughs> makes it worse. So in excess, I guess. Yes, in excess, definitely. Yes. So if you're a coffee person or a tea person yeah. in the morning, then don't have too much of it, just enough to wake up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, those are the common causes of reflux. Mm -hmm. how, how does gastritis generate? Where do exactly one can point out and say this is where it originates? Yeah. So that's gastritis and reflux. Yeah. yeah. And then gastritis is the stomach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Generally, uh, gastritis originates m most of the time due to a bacteria. Uh, it's called Helicobacter pylori, and mm -hmm. the discovery and that actually leads to ulcers, uh, and either ulcers in the stomach or in the duodenum, which is like the first part of the small intestine, first and second part. So, uh, this bacteria causes ulcers and. This was discovered by an Australian doctor, mm -hmm. gastroenterologist called Barry Marshall. And after 20 years, he got the Nobel Prize for that, in medicine for that. Uh, it was in the 80s and he got it in the 2000, uh, I think 2006 or something. So uh, it takes a long time, for, but it really changed. It was a, like a paradigm shift or game changer for uh, ulcer disease because in the past, Surgeons used to treat ulcers because there was no cure. You mm -hmm. had to operate and remove it. But with the, this discovery, then we could get rid of the bacteria and then there was very good anti-ulcer drugs. Mm -hmm. And now it's mainly with the physicians. Uh, but still, uh, sometimes we have to refer to the surgeons, others they get angry with me for saying this. Um, if there is a very severe bleed or something, we still refer them, but it's very, very rare now. So it's mainly medical treatment. Back in those days, maybe in the 60s, 70s, during our parents' era, mm. very young on that, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was gastritis wasn't that common when yes. com in comparison with what the kids nowadays go through. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, I think there are a lot of reasons. One, one is obese. One could be the fizzy drinks that you mentioned. Definitely, fizzy yeah. drinks. Uh, fast food, junk mm -hmm. food, yeah, and obesity in children, which mm -hmm. like well, was really un almost unheard of so many years ago, twenty let's say twenty years ago, because now kids don't really play and uh, play. They I mean play outdoors. <laughs> they they would, like, video games, yeah, happening. video games, and uh, that's it. And uh, tuition in the morning, and they go by the van or car. They don't even walk. Mm -hmm. So, in school they don't play and then they come back and they work or video games, so it's basically no exercise. So, obesity is definitely a contributing factor to this. And the food pattern has changed totally uh, f from what was there, it's all sort of processed food and uh, fast food and fizzy drinks, yes. Actually, uh, in Singapore they have banned. Uh, fizzy drinks and fast food from school cafeterias. Doctor, the most common answer that anyone can actually uh, provide is that if you skip your breakfast, you get gastritis. If you, if it becomes a habit, um, your thoughts on that? Do you agree with it, or does it have any sort of uh, yeah. truthfulness? In well, it? it's like this: like uh, there is no scientific evidence that if you don't eat, you get gastritis. But what yeah. happens is, uh, if you have reflux, mm -hmm. obviously the reflux symptoms may get more mm -hmm. and you know, if you have an ulcer then the symptoms may have more. But as I said, the commonest cause is the bacteria, but the other common cause is uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or in, known as NSAIDs, which for instance example, it's a fancy name for things like uh, drugs which you take if you have knee pain, joint pain, mm -hmm. all that. And so, uh, well those can damage the lining of the stomach and then you can get ulcers as well. So, these are the two. In addition, uh, drugs like aspirin, clopidogrel, which are taken for the heart, they also can damage the lining. So they are commonly used now. Uh, so, because of all those reasons, uh, uh, you can get ulcers and gastritis symptoms. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that may be another contributing factor. So, if you have those things, 
uh, then if you don't eat, the symptoms could get worse. But uh, scientifically speaking, that's not the cause of the illness, mm -hmm. but it makes I the see. symptoms worse. Mm -hmm. So we've spoken about the causes and the symptoms, but how can someone go about preventing gastritis? You know, prevention is always better than cure. Yeah. Uh, well, the reflux things, as you said, uh, if you watch your weight and your food, and then you exercise properly, I think uh, that's a good the mantra for anything. Uh, most of the non-communicable, you get communicable diseases and non-communicable. So, mm -hmm. in the sense, like for example, when a country develops, uh, you get less and less infective diseases like diarrhea and dysentery, things like that, worm infestation. You get non-infective or non-communicable, mm -hmm. uh, like this heart disease, diabetes, uh, reflux, all this. So, uh, if you start exercising, you stop smoking. Smoking is another very important uh, thing uh, that causes reflux and ulcers as well. So, stopping smoking, but today I heard that uh, kids are smoking less, uh, smoking has dropped 7% or something. Uh, that's good news. That's very good news. So, uh, that's uh, one positive thing. And then uh, alcohol uh, mm -hmm. as well causes uh, reflux. Uh, so, generally healthy lifestyle would be, I think, the first thing to prevent. And if you have it, as well, then you would have to go down that road as well. I, I really want to ask you this question <laughs> uh, because I know a lot of uh, the young uh, mm -hmm. people right now, as you said, are moving away from the negativities in yes. life. They don't drink alcohol, they don't consume smoking, but they hit the gym almost every day yeah. and they, they take supplements. Yeah. Is this good? Or yeah, that's I was waiting because that's my pet question, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, pet hate as it is. Uh, I was just, we were just doing a press conference in the morning about something. Uh, but if you talk about supplements, mm -hmm. uh, two examples. Well, first give you the foreign example, then give you the local one. The foreign example is Bolt, Hussein Bolt, doesn't use any supplements. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, never, he's not use anything. Uh, he uses, uh, I mean his diet, um, obviously he is dietitian and cook and all that now. Uh, but he never used and in, in Jamaica there is a type of yam uh, mm -hmm. uh, which they use which is a very high energy thing uh, but and he takes like normal natural sources of protein like egg and mm, chicken and things like that. So mm, that's what he does uh, and uh, the main thing in performance you, all, you take supplements to increase your performance, uh, gym, wherever. Uh, so. You've got to have good genetics in the first place. Without mm -hmm. that, without that, you're not going to make it like that. But if you uh, you don't need supplements, uh, the other example is Susantika, who's uh, not used any supplements, who's had taken breast milk for five years, and who's uh, then had uh, like local food, like jack and things like that, rice, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, protein source would have been mainly uh, yeah, m gram, things like that, uh, who have done very well because of you need talent, uh, the, which is the, the genetics, the talent, train very hard and be mm -hmm. focused and have that hunger. So the gym, what's happening is this is a shortcut. Supplements uh, are easy, they look nice, the tin, what I've said is like if you put, I tell our athletes that if you put Triposha in that same bottle, Mm -hmm. uh, or <laughs> that huge <laughs> thing and give them. They still think it works. I mean, Sipoche will probably work better than uh, supplements. Mm -hmm. So, what happens is it's like just concentrated by the way protein is the main thing. So, uh, you don't need it. And the problem mm -hmm. with supplements is so many other stuff in it. It could be uh, something banned, it could be uh, something which harms your kidneys is, or your liver because anything has to be handled by the kidney or the liver. So, especially kids, there is no reason to do that because g hitting the gym is very good. We all go to the gym, that's fine. But uh, you don't, don't use supplements. All right, so doctor, we'll be going more into how different factors can affect gastritis and how we can prevent it right after this short commercial break. So stay with us right here on Good Morning Sri Lanka.